morning. Today I'm in Jakarta and I want to answer a few of your questions. I haven't done a Q&A in a while and so that's what I'm going to do. Firstly though, I want to thank you all for some of the amazing comments I receive. It really helps me to keep going and keep pushing on when I look down and you've taken the time to put a comment below and especially the words of encouragement is great because it's really hard sometimes to keep going and then I read a few comments that say I should have more subscribers or that say like I'm doing a great job or that the videos are being edited really nice and I wanna thank you all for that. I also received a particularly amazing comment asking loads of questions that I think are really relevant and that I think will help other people if I go through and answer those questions. So that's what I'm gonna do now. So this is that wonderful comment in all its glory from Mr. Beardo 13 Hey Jordan, I've been watching your travel vlogs and you're doing good man, so thank you. Gotta say watching these videos has made me so excited to travel again and I'm hoping to go solo traveling again soon. I've got some questions that I hope you can answer for me. So, first question. Do you often book one-way flights or return flights from one country to another considering if you are traveling in between countries? Now for me, I always book one-way flights. The last time I booked a return flight was a few years ago, I think. I always look to move on from another country. When I fly into one, I'm planning to fly into another. And it can work out cheaper. It can work out a lot cheaper to book a return. But a lot of the time, especially with budget and short distance flights, then it's just as cheap to book two one ways. So that's why I always book one way flights. Question two, how do you get your clothes washed? Now, there's always somewhere to find laundry, always. I've never been anywhere where you can't find somewhere to do laundry. A lot of the time, your hostel or your hotel will do it for you if you just ask, and it's usually pretty reasonable. But if not, especially everywhere in Asia, there are loads of laundry shops to just handle your laundry in and then you get it back fresh and ironed and it's pretty cheap. Question three, what website or app do you use to book your hostels and hotels? And do you normally book a day before or do you try and find one on your day of arrival? Uh, it depends. Um, if I'm arriving late at night, then I'll book a day before, I'll book in advance because it just saves the hassle of walking around and trying to find somewhere. What website or app do I use to book hostel rooms? In Asia, there's a few really good websites. There's Agoda, which gives you some great discounts for lots of hotels. And there's Booking.com, if you're also looking at hotels. For hostels, either Hostel Bookers or Hostel World are two of the main ones. And they're the only real ones I use to book places. There probably are a lot of other hotel and hostel booking sites as well, but those are the main ones that I use. Sometimes, if I'm going to a place and I sort of know the area, or people have told me in advance that it's quite easy just to walk around and find a room, then I'll do that as well. Which, by the way, if you do that, then you often get some good discounts. Because if you just turn up on the day, maybe you can negotiate a better price than if you book the fixed price online. Question four. I know that this is a silly question, but how many t-shirts or vests do you bring along? and your other clothes. And that's not a silly question, actually, because I think that's the mistake a lot of people make when they first go traveling, is that they put way too much clothes into their backpack. And I know I did that. I still do that. So I try and bring minimum stuff, but I still end up with too much. <laughs> I don't know, I think at the moment I've probably got seven or eight t-shirts, and I don't really need that much. It just depends how often you want to get your laundry done or how snuggy you want to be, I guess. But the golden rule of when you're packing is pretty much as much as you think you need, halve it. No matter how much clothes you put in your bag, take out half and you'll still have enough. Question five. I know probably another silly question, but do hostels provide bathroom essentials such as shampoos, body gel, toothpaste and other toiletries? And not a silly question, man, because I don't know. It depends. It depends on the place. But most hotels do. I don't know if they're really budget hotels. Hostels, pretty rarely. Sometimes there's been 
like communal shower gel in a dispenser in the showers, but to be honest, really rarely you're more expected to have your own stuff, especially with the toothpaste. I've only ever seen shower gel, but all the other toiletries you're expected to have yourself. Question six, did you need to have a lot of jabs before traveling? And which jabs did you have? You just need to check with your doctor. I'm not gonna be the person to sit here and give you advice whether you need to get injections to prevent yourself getting deadly diseases or not. Because I don't know, I'm not an expert. But yeah, I had jab before I came away. Um, just go down to your local doctor or travel advice and they'll tell you exactly one, which ones you need and which ones are optional. I know in England there's certain ones that the NHS doesn't cover and you have to pay on top. So it's just your choice whether you want to pay for them for peace of mind or whether you want to take the risk. There are certain countries that will prevent you from coming in unless you've had certain vaccinations as well. So you just need to check that before you go to any country. Question seven. What did you need to rent a motorcycle? Do you need a license or anything? Yes, technically you need a license and you need to have the little tick that says you can rent a motorcycle or more CC is. In practice, it's up to you in Asia. There are some places and some shops that will still say no, you need a license. But to be honest, most places, if you're willing to take the risk, then you can rent a scooter or rent a motorcycle with no problem. Just be careful because most people that come to Asia on a backpacking trip go home with more than just memories. Most people come home with at least a little bit of a scar or a story about how they were in hospital, especially in Thailand, especially in the party islands down in Koh Phang Yang. You walk around there and you see so many people in casts and so many people <laughs> with cuts and damaged ankles just because it's the first time they've been in a motorcycle or maybe they've got a bit drunk, a bit hungover the next day, the roads aren't great and you end up having a crash. So if it is your first time, just be really careful and it's always better to have a license. That being said, the first time I rode a scooter here well not here, the first time I rode a scooter in Thailand was when I was 19 and I didn't have my driving license yet. Rode around for a couple months without too many problems but I still came away with a crash and I still came away with a bit of a scar. So, be careful. Oh and the other thing to say is that also be careful with the police. You don't have a license, you're breaking the law. It's as simple as that really. It's up to you if you want to take that risk. I'm not saying to take it, I'm not saying not to take it, it's your choice. But remember that technically you will be breaking the law. Question eight, final thing, is backpacking insurance expensive or affordable? It's necessary. It's, you can get very cheap options. So you can get a year cover if you go on sites such as Go compare or like confuse.com or any of those sites and just search around for different insurances. You can get really cheap cover, maybe for £50 a year. And that will cover you for most health problems, and that's the main thing you need to get you need to get covered for. All your possessions, everything like that, your flights, whatever, that can be replaced. And you will only ever lose the value of your possessions or your flights. But let's say you're going trekking into a jungle somewhere and you end up breaking your leg. There's no reputable hospital for a few hours around and you need to get airlifted out. Around some places like Laos or Burma, even Thailand, that will cost you maybe $100,000 to get an airlift to a proper hospital. And if your insurance will cover that. If you have proper travel insurance, that will cover it. But if you don't, then you or your family could be lumped with this giant bill that you'll never be able to pay off. So really make sure you look into the terms and conditions of whatever backpacker insurance you're looking at and you make sure that it will cover you for any activities you're going to do. I'm pretty carefree about most things, but I think you really need travel insurance, especially with health insurance cover. Because you just never know. 
even going back to the motorcycle thing, even if you're a perfect scooter driver, you're a perfect motorcycle driver, you've never had any problems, that's not to say that someone else might not crash into you. You could just be driving along normally, perfectly safe with your helmet on, and some junk driver comes around the corner, smashes into you, and you need to go to the hospital, and God forbid that will happen, but at least if it does happen, then you'll have insurance to cover you. Myself, I use World Nomads because it is a very reliable cover and because there aren't that many policies that will cover you once you're already travelling. If you want to start an insurance policy while you're in another country, there's only a few specific ones that will do that and World Nomads do that. So I'll put a link to that anyway in the description below if you want to have a look, but that's the insurance company that I use. So Mr. Bilo, I hope that answered all your questions and I hope that helped everyone else as well because I thought they were some great questions, really relevant to everything I'm trying to do and you took the time to write this fantastic comment so I wanted to give it what it deserves and do a full video just about that one comment. And thank you again for everyone that's commenting and asking these sort of questions. I'm going to do more Q&As in the future because I think they'll be really helpful. Now, on this camera, let me show you the rig that I'm using to film this. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Safety at its finest. But the video is at an end now, and it's just about held together. So, thank you for watching. I hope that helped, and this is my life.